this is going to be the first of four videos with regards to the timeline. And I'll just give you the outline now, so if you want to skip ahead and go to that specific portion, you may do so. This one is basically for those who have come out of church anity. Again, you should be wearing seat seat. Um, but they have this belief that nobody knows the day or the hour. It's not the, not even the Son of Man, not the angels, nobody. So how could you ever know? And so that's what this video is about, getting you on that prep of we do know when this is going to be. He always tells his elect when certain things are going to be. That comment with, is regards to the end of the all things at the age, you know, at the end of the millennial reign. So that's what this video is dealing with. The second video is going to be the Revelation 12 timeline. And the third video is regards to the Genesis 6-3 timeline. Uh, 120 years, and what does that mean, and when would that actually hit? The fourth video is with regards to 153 fish that are captured. We hear that from John. Now, I'm going to make it real easy for you. I don't have the answer on 153 fish. I know that certain things don't work, and I can I can see where it should be, but the, the numbers don't match. So I'm going to throw that as a um, cog in the wheel. So with that being said, this video is, again, with regards to that he tells his elect. Um, and so the thing that catches most people, they always have come out of church, Andy, and they deal with Matthew 24. So let's deal with Matthew 24. Um, they always start with verse 36. And the NIV, for instance, even breaks that down so they can get that pure thought in the day and hour no one knows. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Now, what day are they talking about? And people just naturally come out of church hand and say, well, that's got to be when the return of the Son of Man is, right? No. First of all, let's look at the beginning of Matthew 24 to realize there are three questions that are being asked in Matthew 24. So therefore, there are three answers. And this has thrown off people forever because they're not seeing the questions. They just see the answers and they, they try to apply the answers to where they want it to be. Let's start off with Matthew 24, 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him and called his attention to his buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? I truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, verse 3, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? When, when what happened? It's when the stones are going to be thrown down. So that's question one. When's the temple going to be destroyed? Question one. And what will be the sign of your coming? Question two. And the end of the age? Question three. So we have three questions. There's going to be three answers. So all these people who have been out there in church anity, and when you come to faith, you still have church anity in you. We're trying to beat it out of you as fast as possible. Or the, <laughs> we create or whatever. They're trying to get church anity out of you. So some of the thoughts are, well, because of the 70 year, this generation shall not pass, all those things happened back then. Yeah, they did for the destruction of the temple. That was just the one part of the three questions. So let's break those down. So let's go back to verse, because we now know that there are three questions here. Let's go and try to figure out when Matthew uh, 24, 36 is talking about. Um, so let's go to verse 34. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Answer to question 1. 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That's the precursor to verse 36. Your Bible tries to break this down, especially the NIV, but this is the precursor to the answer. Heaven and earth will pass away. When does heaven and earth pass away? At the end of the millennial reign. 
But about that day and hour, or day or hour, day or hour, no one knows what day or hour, when heaven and earth passes away. So that answer refers to a completely different issue. Okay? <clears throat> now that I've tried to break that down, now let's actually cause more confusion. Which, again, just because I want to be direct on everything that's here. Um, if you look at Matthew 25, 13, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Uh-oh. Those Now we've kind of put it back, haven't we? Not really. Church Anity has taken that and combined it with the earlier one, but they're not combined. Now, let's look back to Leviticus 23, 24. Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly, commemorating with trumpets and blasts. What we call the day, what I call the day of trumpets. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. Um, so, of the seven feasts of the Lord, okay, and one of them is, I, again, I call them the Feast of Trumpets. It's also referred to as Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. This is the only one that doesn't have an exact starting time. What? But we, and you could say, no, it has to, because it says it starts on the first day of the month. The moon determines when the first day of the month is. And so you have to look for that sliver of the moon. And because of that, when you're in Jerusalem, what happens if it's cloudy that night? You don't know which day or hour it is. And so it's hard to really lock down when that thing is. Now, in today's society, because we've got computers and we can determine when the moon is orbiting, when that will actually be, we can be much more exact and we don't have to refer to looking as much, especially with clouds. But because of that, the Feast of Trumpets, because you don't know when the moon is actually on that sliver, they used to actually call it the Feast that no one knows the day or hour of. <laughs> So I think we can now look back at 25. He's locking in that I'm coming to trumpets. I think it's pretty clear that he is. In addition to which, we know that that's the next one in line. You know, um, He died on Passover, buried on unleavened bread, rose on first fruits, Holy Spirit was given on Shavuot. Next one up in line is trumpets. So that's when he should return. Day of Atonement will be first resurrection and later on a second resurrection and uh, Sukkot will be when we were ready to go to heaven heaven comes to earth we go into it so um, that being said now let's look at some other information because we have that to at least say okay well it might be on a day that we might know and almost anybody in our faith long enough knows He's coming back on trumpets. Now, let's also look at Luke, Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. <clears throat> How do you escape? Well, escape is exodus. It always has been. So, we have a different thing. We're supposed to watch and know. Now, he repeatedly told us about Noah. The return will be just like in the days of Noah. Now we have that Matthew 24, 37. As it was in the day of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. They're not going to know. They're not going to know the time. Um, now let's go back because he's told us about Noah. Let's look. Did Noah know when to, when things were going to happen? Yes. Uh, he knew, Genesis 7, 4, and he listened. He built the ark. He did that. Um, now we also have, it mentions Lot in Luke 17, 28. Same thing. They were married and given in marriage, and then it was too late. But Lot, he knew when the time was, and that was Genesis 19, 13, and 14, and he obeyed. 
After those, we have the exodus from those Israelites that were in Egypt and the, those that went with them that were not Israelites who became Israelites. They knew about what time it was. That's Exodus 12. Moses was told by God. Um, and that's in verse 12. Moses then told all the Israelites, which is verse 21, and they obeyed, verse 28. So again, if you are part of the elect, he's going to tell you. It's up to you to find that, to work for it. But he's going to tell you. Now, why do I say it's up to you to help find that? Well, unfortunately, we have a specific church in Revelation 3, which is the church of Sardis. And he tells them to wake up. In verse 2, wake up, strengthen what is remains, and is about to die, for I found your deeds unfinished. They haven't finished everything. They're just, they still haven't learned what they need to know. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will know, not know at what time I will come to you. Um, and they're not going to know about the Exodus. Don't be Sardis. Don't be the church in Sardis, because they are left behind when we leave for Exodus. Now, just because they're left behind doesn't mean they can't get in but they are left behind. It's much harder, and they can't bring their family. Okay, That's one of the great things about knowing that there are multiple groups that are going to be going to the kingdom. Four of the five groups leave either a few days earlier than, than Passover, which will be those in Judea. Two of the groups leave on Exodus, which is everybody else. And one group has to be beheaded. And that they have to actually make it to the bold judgments. So if you're in the church of Sardis and you're not realizing and thinking about the Exodus, and you can be lost, you can be left behind. If you want to get into the first resurrection, you still have to, you have to make it through the bold judgments, or sorry, make it through the trumpet judgments make it to the bold judgments, and then you have to be beheaded for refusal of the bark of the beast. So, not a, pro, not a pretty thing. Now, we also have from Ezekiel 14 that those who leave on the Exodus are going to be able to take their children. Noah took his children. Lot took his children. Okay? But if you don't know about the Exodus and you're left behind, it's, it's every man for himself to get in. So don't be in that group. Although there are going to be many of them in that group. Um, 